So this video is about objectivity. Objectivity is a term that's viewed by many as the holy grail of journalistic writing. If you're being objective, then you're doing your job properly. If you're not being objective, then you're doing something wrong. This viewpoint stems from an increasing distrust with what many view as an increasingly bipartisan American news media. Often a news event will be covered in completely different ways by different outlets, not only altering public discourse, but sometimes even going as far to alter public perception as to how the event even played out in the first place. It's not hard to change the TV between different networks or click on two similar headlines from different news sources and scratch your head wondering how the conversation can be this different. It's only reasonable to think that the main reason behind the discrepancies in how stories are told lies in the subjectivity of the people telling the stories. If journalists only stated the facts and nothing more, then there would be no discrepancy, right? Well, the first place we need to start in order to answer that question is with the most objective part of the subject, definitions. And the go-to place to find definitions is in a dictionary. In research, a dictionary is viewed as a kind of primary source. If you open up the dictionary and read a definition, then you're looking directly at it, so you don't need to verify the information. I, meanwhile, am a secondary source. If I'm telling you what's in the dictionary, then the information is only as trustworthy as I am. If you wanted to be thorough with your reporting, you would probably want to go to the dictionary yourself to verify the information. Thankfully, I do have the power of video on my side, so I can show you the primary source while reading it to you secondarily. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the word objectivity is a noun derived from the word objective, which can be used as either a noun in three different ways or as an adjective in two different ways. Of course, these aren't the only applications of the word. If the Oxford English Dictionary included every possible meaning of every single word, you wouldn't be able to hold the book if it existed physically. But according to Oxford, these five definitions are the ones that matter the most. The first definition for the word objective is the one we're looking for. It states that the word objective, when used in reference to a person or their judgment, means that they are not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and reporting facts. Perfect. So if news media wants to be objective, then that means they should completely remove all personal feelings and opinions when writing their stories. That should be easy, right? No. In fact, even the most immediate and hardest of news stories always have an element of subjectivity in play. This can be most easily seen in something like sentence structure. The sentences, today Zach went out to eat a cheeseburger, Zach went out today to eat a cheeseburger, and Zach went out to eat a cheeseburger today, use the exact same words and convey the exact same message, but they place different emphasis on the three key nouns of the sentence. The sentence a writer or editor chooses to put in their story ultimately is a result of their deciding which subject takes higher priority. Is it more important important that Zach specifically went out, or is it more important that he went out today? The answer to that is subjective. This may seem fairly trivial compared to the massive discrepancies that many observe in modern news media, but simple choices like this balloon into bigger problems as stories get more complicated. When trying to compress the inner workings of a controversial 59-page Supreme Court decision about cake baking into a 500-word news blurb, decisions on what aspects of the case take priority have larger consequences. When trying to explain the technology behind and implementation of a complicated undercover government spy program to an unknowing general public, omitting the wrong piece of information from a report could be disastrous. Asterisk. These stories are huge for media outlets and journalists, but they also are points where the true subjective inner workings of the journalism world are shown most vulnerably. But that's sort of what the purpose of the news is to begin with, to tell you what's important through condensing information into a digestible format. In a world where millions of things happen to billions of people every second, it's impossible to truly understand everything. We rely on the news to tell us the important facts of the day, every day. And that job is subjective at its very core. Reportage of news is subjective. Ultimately, just like I am with this video, the news is merely a secondary source to the real world events we experience in our daily lives. If you really want to know the facts, you need to go back to the primary source and see what's going on. While it arguably could be much better, reputable news outlets generally are responsible with regards to linking back to primary sources, and the ability to hyperlink on a web page makes sourcing that much easier. So yeah, news is always going to be somewhat biased and subjective, and how much they choose to wear that subjectivity on their sleeve is really up to the discrepancy of the outlet. At the end of the day though, it's the responsibility of the readers to constantly remain skeptical of the media they consume. Placing too much trust in any particular secondary source renders one vulnerable to ignoring the biases of both themselves as a reader and the outlet as a news provider. Readers need to verify information against primary sources if they want to attain a complete understanding of any particular story. Thankfully, primary sources are objective. Except they're actually not. Remember that dictionary definition from earlier? That was from Oxford. 
Looking at Merriam-Webster paints a notably different picture. Merriam-Webster decided to have three adjective uses for objective in their definition instead of Oxford's two, and they dropped the noun usages down to two. Their definition also has a different wording, expressing or dealing with facts or conditions as perceived without distortion by personal feelings, prejudices, or interpretations. This definition, while certainly similar to the Oxford one, suggests that objectivity deals with facts as perceived, whereas Oxford suggests that objectivity deals with facts, period. Going off of that sentence alone, that would mean that, according to Oxford, a partially colorblind person calling the sky purple would be making a subjective statement, but according to Merriam-Webster, he is still being objective. This discrepancy is clarified by other parts of the definition, but is nonetheless different enough from the Oxford definition to be noteworthy. The Webster definition also places slightly less emphasis on the person and more emphasis on the claim. Oxford specifically states that the word objective in this context applies to a person or their judgment. Webster doesn't mention people in their definition whatsoever. So which definition definition is right? Well, both of them, and neither of them. Because as much as we like to consider dictionaries to be a primary source, they are nonetheless as subjective as the people that write them. The organizations behind dictionaries take great care to ensure that their definitions, while not exactly objective, are at the very least agreeable. The main way they do this is by cataloging a massive database of written works and having a large team of people analyze and agree upon a definition set. After all, the more people become involved in the process of definition writing, the more people will inherently accept it. This is also why I couldn't make up a new definition for the word objectivity on the spot right now and force you to accept it. I don't have enough support for people to back up my definition and use of the word, so therefore my new definition will be rendered incorrect on the spot. If I were to make up a new definition and claim this is what the word actually means, I would be making an objective claim. This, as the term suggests, is an instance where someone claims that something is objective, regardless of whether or not it actually is objective. Now, some might cite the Webster definition and argue that a colorblind person saying the sky is purple is truly objective, but most people would probably label that as a blatantly false statement at most times of the day. We as a society have agreed that, at most times of the day, the color that most humans see when they look at the sky is in fact a shade of blue. So therefore, the sky is blue. In theory, that means that their objective claim of the sky being purple was proven false. But that doesn't make the sky look any less purple to them. Perception is unavoidable. The reality we live in is subject to how we perceive it. Gravity used to only move down, the sun used to revolve around the earth, and Pluto used to be a planet. But as human understanding evolved, these once undeniable facts also evolved. The only reason why things are considered to be true today is because there's enough consensus on the subject for it to be considered true. Facts in and of themselves are subject to the society that deems them as being factual. Truth is subjective. So does objectivity exist anywhere? Well, not purely. Humans are incapable of fully separating their biases and experiences from anything they say or do. No matter how hard we try, we will never be able to create a truly objective report or analysis of anything. The claim that someone is making an objective report or analysis is subjective in and of itself. Data is subject to the conditions under which it was obtained. Medical diagnosis is subject to doctor analysis of reported symptoms. Our understanding of history is subject to the people that write it. Sports scores are subject to referee calls, and definitions are subject to the dictionary you attain them from. If all of that's the case, then is objectivity even worth striving for? If it doesn't exist and can't exist, then what's the point? Well, perhaps objectivity isn't really the goal at all. Maybe it's something else. The reason why people want their news and reports to be objective is because they view theoretical objectivity as being more credible. What else gives credibility to a primary or secondhand report? While true objectivity is impossible, disclosure certainly isn't. Revealing as much as possible about the circumstances behind a report arms the reader and fosters critical thinking in its audience. Nuance is also essential to giving credibility to a report. No subject is ever simple enough to be reduced to a single two-sided debate. Even in instances where the evidence overwhelmingly supports one viewpoint, acknowledging nuance fosters productive conversation and de-escalates potential conflict. Above all else, however, the key element Element that gives credibility to a report is consensus. Just like a dictionary, if enough people believe something to be true, then it will be true. One primary source may not be trustworthy, but when it's 5, 10, 20, it's much more credible. 
As we can see with the dictionary, however, two statements can be equally credible and say slightly different things. And it's that difference and nuance which makes us human to begin with. It's easy to say that the facts of our world are objective and unchanging, but it's harder to admit that our imperfect world can't merely be reduced to facts. It's harder to admit that our understanding of that world is subjective and ever-changing. It's harder to admit that being right isn't as important as learning from when you might be wrong. It's harder to admit that people can disagree and both be right. It's harder to admit that common ground exists between opposing viewpoints. And it's hardest of all to admit that, no matter how informed or misinformed we may or may not be, we're all still people at the end of the day. So let's not worry about objectivity. Let's worry about credibility, yes, but let's worry more about the conversation. I've talked for long enough. It's time for me to listen. Salutations. Thank you so much for watching this video on objectivity. Sorry if I'm out of focus. Uh, this is actually my second day doing this. I filmed everything I needed yesterday and found out I was out of focus. It's great. We're not doing the clap thing. It was so season one. So season one. Moving on. Doing something new. I just have two videos I want to share with you. And now I'm going to get out of your hair because I already said I was going to shut up. And then here I am still talking. So the first video I want to recommend to you is sort of the spiritual predecessor to this video. It's about reviews. A lot of the things I said in that video I kind of disagree with now, uh, but that's sort of the point. I mean, opinions evolve over time. So if you disagree with this video, that's fine. If you disagree with the old video that I just recommended, that's fine too. Because I might disagree with some stuff I said in this video a few years from now. It's about evolving and listening and, you know, communicating and learning. That's the whole point, right? Uh, the other video I want to recommend is the last video I made, which is about 8th grade, which is one of my favorite movies that came out last year, one of my favorite movies ever, uh, and it actually, some of the filming for that video actually took place in this same park right here, so a little bit of a weird tie there, but I'm going to get out of your hair, I said I would shut up, so uh, um, that's about it, have a good one, thank you so much for watching, peace. At the end of the video, I'm going to slap the burger out of this game. Call him ugly, that's a subjective Wait, what was you saying? Nothing. How long have we been recording? For a minute and 40 seconds. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> this shit's literally gonna be like 10 seconds. Stop!